So good afternoon, September the 1st, 2014. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Light. Today is the first, first day in the second week of the semester. So let's get started. Good afternoon and welcome back. Unfortunately, today the microphone does not seem to be working. I have to speak up, but before the class begins, it's this Dresses someone else. I picked this up this morning in the third row. Okay, and looks like the person who wear this glass has a very high sort of sightedness. So without glasses, I think he or she must be having some difficulties. So welcome back. Well, first of all, let me welcome you to this the weather environment for this semester. I have not finished all, but I finished two words, material, <coughs> but it's okay, let's get started and move on to it step by step. So, last week, I introduced to you the course support environment, which is the CISG 241, uh, 114, okay, so it's this side that I introduced to you last week. All right, this site contains all the core information of this semester's work, but it's a site not designed so much as the UN Moodle environment to help you learn the best you could. So, beside this foundation site, we provide you with the learning management system, UN Moodle. Well, Moodle is not new, it's just something which we can use to help you get started managing your learning. So, the step number one is to introduce to you the housekeeping block. So, in this block, we have the learning center service ready. So, the PDF version is here. So you click on to this, you can see and read the PDF versions and download it. Now, I assume each one of you should have finished reading the service by the end of this week, okay? So it's the second week of the semester. You should finish reading the syllabus by the end of this week. So the idea is to give it, we have a few sounds in uh, Mandarin, but it, it makes a lot of sense in this course. It said, you must be your own pathfinder, okay? You must be your own pathfinder. And then we have the GE handbook of this year, which is the University's Open Health Versions, the third editions. And then we have the calendar of the university, so you can read the calendar and see which day of the semester is supposed to be holidays. And we are going to have one holiday next week, which is the Mid-Autumn Festival. And then the Student Academic Dishonesty Act. The university has some rules, highly discouraging students copying homework or product of one another. So you can read this and be very careful not to do anything that's stated here. And the disability support services is very important. It represents the efforts and commitments of the University of Nepal to help anybody with physical disability to learn the best he or she could. So basic information is to keep in mind. And then some tools to use. Basically, if you are from a Chinese student, a Chinese secondary school, you need help in understanding the English word. Here is a free English Chinese dictionary for you. And um, another English, English, English dictionary, the very important stuff, the American style. And if you need help in your English, this is a website for you. Very good. It helps you to do up your English step by step. Then, let me turn on this editors. Then we have the attendance record. We're going to do one attendance at record every class, so you're going to see how I can do it. And then the class announcement, class announcement news, including the two messages I sent out yesterday. If you come back here, the rhythm is mainly a one-way channel from the teacher to the whole class. But this one is a social forum so that you, each one of you is allowed to write something on this social forum and solicit responses from the rest of the class. So I highly recommend that you make the best use of this to share ideas and to publicize your own uh, 
perspective. And this one, the last one, is a little bit different. It's, it's just my forum, but this is a dedicated forum for each one of you. That means each one of you has a forum to talk with me only, not anybody in the class. So it's just like a private line. You can pick it up and you can tell, talk to that wherever you want, without the knowledge of the whole class. So it's a private channel, all right? So if you have anything you believe you're afraid to ask during class, you can ask me here 24 seven. I can probably respond to you within hours, or if not within minutes. So this is for the whole semester. All right, keep me posed online. Use them. And then we have week number one. You can see that this is last week's material. This is for week number one from August the 25th to August the 30th. And we have two days, day one and day two. Day one, August the 25th, day two, August the 28th, Monday and Thursday in this room, E4, 10, 51. Now, at some last week, we are trying to put into perspective something about web technology in your life, including helping you to understand what is meant by technology, what is meant by information technology, and in between science and engineering, all right? So how do we, how do we come to terms with Web 2.0 in our daily living? How? I love Facebook. I come home, first of all, reading my Facebook account to see how many messages of picture I receive. I read emails on Google, all right? And I buy books from Amazon, all right? Because it's cheap, it's fast, and it's what I like. And then I watch news online through the web, and I seldom watch TV for Hong Kong stations, or from a cow station, except for local news, when I watch program online around the world. So, um, so I think uh, the web is such a useful platform. Well, today, I want to make sure that you know something about IBL, because inquiry-based learning is quite different from the traditional way teacher-center teaching. Teacher-center teaching does not to transmissive instructions. I'm the person who's talking here, you're there listening, whether or not you do it passively or enthusiastically. But IBL is a student-centered approach. That means as a teacher, I don't just teach you knowledge. I must help you learn to learn. All right? So the way to do learn to learn on your part is to make sure I help you to understand how to start out exploration process. And one thing that must be done is you must have a topic of interest. It's called interest-based learning, together with a lot of questioning, essential questions, not the non-essential question. Today, the deplorable thing that happened is a lot of students ask questions, but they ask non-essential questions. The answer to those questions are largely available already, but you don't discover them. So we, we helped you to, to find the answer by providing a good service, a good support website, and the learning management system website. So you don't ask trivial questions. You ask essential questions, questions that really are the core of the learning, right? So IBL, it's the kind of learning that requires of you to do some thinking, do some preparations, and ask some good questions, and start getting your hands and knees dirty to find the answer. And that's why we use learning contracts as the term for our site. Well, every week you will see a broad like this, and since we're going to meet two times a week, you can see day one, day two, day three, day four. And at the very beginning of each week's block, you see a small number of housekeeping details. For example, the teacher's message at the beginning of the week. Well, this week you have two, because one for last week, one for this week. And then I give you a piece of music, which is a video, sounds to be a light depreciation. Then I give you some keys on how to get the most of your study, how to enhance your learning. These are make up of excellent video produced by professors around the world. Then you can see the readings for the week, reading for week number one, and videos for week number one. These are for you to 
to read, to watch, to choose, whatever it is, but it's your responsibility to do your choices. And then if you're so much accustomed to teacher-centered teaching, you need the help of a teacher to guide you through learning based on a textbook. Okay, you don't need to buy a textbook, but if you want, you can buy it. Or you can go to the library, check out the textbook, Xerox the copy of the chapter you want, but all the best things of the textbook, it's already here. You can just go through them, okay? And then, I give you the PowerPoint, I give you the looks on the, each chapter, I give you the main points, I give you the vocabulary, I give you the glossary, I give you the discussion question, the peer exercise suggested, the teamwork exercise suggested, whatever you need in order to get through your learning the traditional way, come here, okay? This is the sketch folding. And then for each week, you can see I do have some suggestions and for before class activity, during class activity, after class activity, as well as end of the week activity to, to organize yourself because a lot of the students find it very difficult to, to manage the work, manage the time, particularly manage the learning in the context of the course. So as a teacher, I need to help you build up that ability. I showed you kind of patterns of learning habits that you need to develop in yourself, no matter which course you're doing, all right? So if you're doing something similar in each course, you can easily transport or transfer those material you develop in each course into your learning portfolio later. That is your Mahara portfolio. If you're living in the residential college, definitely are taking SAG 100. And SAG 100 is of course university life course. And one of the requirements there is you need to grow up your Mahara to track your learning and development. And where are you going to get those artifacts? Individual courses you take. So in Kumoto, there is some kind of downloading, directly download your work you're going to complete here into your Mahara So it's very convenient. So once you got it here, you got it there, all right? So now, you know the patterns. So at the beginning of each week, you see some kind of housekeeping chores here, and then on each day, there's something we focus on. So on the first day, we have the, um, the support website links. And I, I, I tell you frankly, you have to be responsible for reading those links, no matter how briefly you've gone through it, but those links have all the information you need in order to answer some non-essential questions in the course as well as some essential questions in the course. So go through them, link by link, okay? I hope you've already done it over the weekend. And day number two, which is last Thursday, what we need to go through, we didn't go through it along this line, but we've gone through it, uh, through a different way of introducing yourself. So today we're going to help you understand a little bit. Active learning. Well, what is meant by active learning in the college sense? And then, well, blend learning sometime later. And two very important PowerPoint on gender education. So you need to go through them at home, not now here. And a little bit of the essential questions. It's what technology making your life better. Now, each one of us need to answer it on our own. But when we answer this question, it's mostly based on personal experience. I start out in class by telling you that I have a Facebook account. I read my Facebook account every day to be connected with my friends to see what's happening around the world. Pictures of my friends living, the kids praying. And then I keep in touch with different friends, not just with Facebook, but other kind of social media. And Web technology include Facebook. If I say, well, web technology is making my life better because it gives me Facebook to be connected with my friend, that's one basis to argue. I think I'll argue for that. But what about yours? So think a little bit about this. In what way are you using web technology today? How can I enumerate examples of web technology? And then, is this good? Is this bad? And you make a conclusions on your own. Okay? And you share that with your buddies, learning part of the particular. And I have got one PowerPoint which sounds very interesting about the learning space design. Now, 
Reparably, this is an excellent room, but it's, it, it is designed along the teacher center line of learning. So you sit there, you are watching and talking, just like learning is a spectator sport. But learning is not a spectator sport. Learning is something you need to get your knees and hands dirty. A learning space design, in the old campus, we do have an RGO center room. It's a collaborative classroom where tables, circular tables are set up. And so I've been using that for several semester, and I sit my students around tables. So I'm just like a manager waiter, and what can I help you? I give them a menu when they come to class. Not to eat something, what they're supposed to do. All right? So, but today in the classroom night, it's very hard for you to turn around. It's very good for you to take a nap. Okay? So it, it's very important sometimes, the learning space design, if I want to encourage my student to learn actively using a room like this, I need to put in a lot more effort to think of how to use the space instead of just talking. So we're going to help you through a little bit about active learning. Today. Now, let's take a look at the tools we have. Each week, I'm going to give you some tools to track your learning, and these set consistent tools are very useful. For example, in each week, you're going to be given a personal online learning journal, just like an electronic notebook, where you type in something, you save it there, it's your notebook, no one can read it, only your instructor, that means I can read it, and you keep track of your notes taken every week using a new electronic notebook, okay? I'm going to give you a new one every week. And then, if you're ready, after you've taken some notes for your journals, for a specific topic that you choose, you want to share that with your class. Come here, this is called a topic online discussion forum, where you just need to type in the topic, type in a little bit of your thinking, and solicit response from your particular learning partners or buddies of your, of your good friends. And, well, tell you what, a lot of the students enjoy it very much because they can understand, they, they, could, they could share a little bit of their finding, for example. Um, a group of students in my class understand the interesting thing of my class. Use a very simple geometric rectangle to create a lot of objects. They talk about my class and they import into the discussion forum a lot of the interesting YouTube videos about how to use existing tools to build classroom of the design, to build different scenarios of learning. And they Start it out with the interest. Or if you're interested in doing um, kind of record animations, and you can start off on something like this here. These are web technology tools. And like in the whole semester, every week, I will also set up one Dr. Vets QA hotline, which is the private channel for that particular week, to address your questions related to the topics of interest in that particular week. So, if you look at it very carefully, every week in the semester, you will have these basic three items, of three tools, uh, these two set of three items, they help you manage your learning, organize your learning. Then, you also have the teacher's message every week. And just like last week, we went through the first week of class. Now, for example, as a teacher, I do not know how you feel. So I set up a questionnaire for you to complete before the end of today. Okay. Before the end of today, that means your homework today. Okay. All right? Remember, before the end of today, 11.55 p.m. tonight. Please do it. Then what are you supposed to do? Some very simple answer. Provide some information concerning, concerning your experience last week. You can read the questions there by walking into this questionnaire. But when are you going to do it? before 11.55 tonight, okay? Simple, 17 questions. You can do it in five to 10 minutes, all right? And then I'm going to share with you the result on this first thing. Remember, homework number one, complete this questionnaire today before 11.55, okay? All right, thank you. So, this is for week number one. Week number two. You can see something similar. At the very beginning, you have week number two from August the 31st to September 6th. And we're going to start day number three, which is today, and day number four, which is first day. 
right here in this room again, but the topic for each turn become common module one, which is according to our syllabus schedule. And we're going to talk something about information technology and knowledge society. Actually, we start talking about this last week. We're going to stick to inquiry-based learning, IBL, with, which is basically the theme of the first learning contract. I want to help you to develop your ability to do IBL. That means you have the ability to choose a topic. You have the ability to develop a sense of question for exploration. But in what way? I'm going to tell you more on the first day. Now, again, this week, you have a small block of housekeeping detail. Teacher's message for week number two, and then another piece of wonderful music. And look at this, the five most essential soft skills to help you go through the learning path in college education. Spend about 15 minutes there, about five minutes per video, five videos together. And these are done by excellent British scholars, okay? So excellent presentations, excellent project management, excellent problem solving ideas. And so, readings for week number two, you need to choose an information item under each question, or at least work on one question. Video for week number two, and come back to learn and practice for this particular learning contract number one, and again before class, during class, after class, and end the week activity. When you finish today's class, be sure to switch to each one of this lane tonight, read them through, and they will remind you of everything you need to keep in mind for the past two weeks, for the past week and this week, okay? And day number three today, we're going to tell you what is IBL, okay? So IBL from a teacher's point of view, from a student's point of view, and then from a university institutional point of view. Oh yes, I need some time to upload my videos to YouTube so you cannot see the links yet, uh, but you will definitely see them in one or two days. So, for week number two, let's forget about day number four. Again, you have a new online learning journal for week number two, so you can see journal 002, a new public online discussion forum for week number two, and then Dr. Bat's Q&A online for week number two, as well as teacher's message for week number two, okay? so. Look at that. You do not need to buy an extra notebook. The notebook is here. The discussion forum is here. Your private chat of asking questions is here. And I'm going to give you something more as we step into the third grade and the fourth grade. But you're doing web technology, right? You need to use this web technology for a journal, for a discussion forum, for private channels for discussions, or question and answer and read them, okay? Get used to them first, all right? Get used to them. So, are you ready? I finished my two 15 minutes. Now we get into the third 15 minutes. So, pay attention. I'm going to give you five minutes video to introduce active learning, all right? So, let's go. What is active learning? First, active learning involves teaching techniques that are something other than straight lecture. Second, active learning is not an entire project or assignment, but a much smaller task you give your students. However, a project or assignment can have several active learning pieces within it. Third, in order to consider something active learning, students must be doing something including discovering, processing, and applying information not just listening to a lecture or reading a PowerPoint. Active learning can take many different forms, and instructors often use different strategies in face-to-face -face and online classes due to their differing approaches to teaching and learning. For example, in a classroom, the instructor might ask each student to turn to their neighbor and discuss a particular topic. In an online course, the same exercise can be accomplished using a discussion thread, document sharing, or instant messaging. The idea is the same, but the approach is different. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face class example, simply having students turn to their neighbor and discuss a topic is active learning. 
in the online course, having two students discuss the same topic via a discussion thread is active learning as well. Research shows that students learn more when they're engaged in active learning. It's important to remember that lecture does have its place in both face-to-face -face and online environments. However, during active learning, students are involved in much more than just reading or listening, and more emphasis is placed on higher-order thinking skills, such as analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Further research has shown that students retain 70% of what they say and write, and they retain 90% of what they do. Compare this with the fact that students retain only 10% of what they read and 20% of what they hear, and you'll start to understand why active learning is so important. Now that we have an understanding of what active learning is and why we should implement it, let's look at some specific examples to give you a clearer picture of what constitutes active learning in practice. Let's take the example of a small group discussion. In a face-to-face -face setting, you might group students up and ask them to discuss a particular topic. While this alone is active learning, you can add to the exercise by asking each group to present their findings to the class in the form of a standard presentation, a radio or TV commercial, or a comedy skit. Now let's look at a small group discussion in an online course. You can group students into separate discussion threads and have them discuss a particular topic. Again, this alone can be considered active learning, but you can add to the exercise by having students present their findings using various Web 2.0 tools such as recording a presentation with a PowerPoint or a Prezi, submitting a voice thread with audio and a series of images that relate to the topic, or present their topic in story format using Google Maps. As you can see, the possibilities are virtually limitless, so be creative. Both our face-to-face -face and online active learning examples cover the higher-order thinking skills of analysis and synthesis, but what about evaluation? In this example, it would be quite easy to hold a peer review of each presentation. In a face-to-face -face class, you can simply have students give their opinions on how appropriate each group's observations were and how well they presented the information. This should spur more conversation with the guidance of the instructor. In an online course, Peer reviews can be held using a simple discussion thread or a voice thread. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face and online class examples, the small group discussion is active learning, as is the preparation for the presentation, the presentation itself, and the peer review of the presentation. Each step in the process is itself a distinct active learning strategy. Since students retain more information during active learning, simply stated, Active learning equals better learning. Okay, now you have the first piece of college-based interpretations of what active learning is. I'm going to walk you through an instance of active learning by inviting you to find individually three other persons to form a group now. Okay, so we have, I think we can form about five groups here. Now four persons per group. Look around, just coalesce with three other persons to form one group. I'll give you five minutes time to do that. And then once the groups are formed, find your site, okay? You can sit on the floor, and this morning I have two class of students with three groups sitting on the front because it's the most spacious area, and two groups of students on the back, and two others on the side. But in this, I think you can do it in both front and back. Now move around. I need you to form groups of four persons, each group four persons, and you are free to look for your group mates, okay? In five minutes time, I want to transform you into five or six groups of students with four students in each group. So stand up, please, look around, and when you stick to your group member, Hold them together, don't let them lose, okay? All right, so, and then, once you got the group member ready, look for your side, and that is my side, and then all, all of you can, I tell you what, this is an excellent side for discussion. This is another excellent side. So come and occupy those sides. All right, go, go, go. Look for your members, groups, in five minutes time. Okay, and look for your side to occupy one area of your members. Remember, four persons per group, all right? Now, we're going to want the problem of odd number of students, okay? You can always pick them in. Okay, the boys and the guys, the girls, grab someone. All right? 
You just need to take your brain and your brawn in with you, your backs to the left on the chairs. No one is going to take things away from you. Where do you want to go? Let's just go. You can sit down on the floor. It's clean enough. Don't worry. Have you ever gone camping? We sit on the floor. Sit down. Come down. Straight out. You know. All right. Count this down. Start up by grouping and get to the side. Spread out. Get to the side. Ready. If you want to sit on a chair, it's no problem. If you want to do something like this, no problem. But take care. All right. Okay, once you're ready, I'm going to get your tops. Alright? So the two two groups over there, spread out, one here, and one in the middle. Okay, one here, one at the back. Get your side. Okay, get your side, sit down, lie on the floor whenever you want. Help yourself, okay? Good, eat. Okay, let me say five, four, three, two. One, you need one more person. Okay, can you come here and join them? You, you want to join this? Oh, it's okay. Uh, you have, okay, free, it's good enough, it's all right. Don't, don't worry. If you got free, free. Uh, you have three groups to choose, at them four, okay? Help yourself. Now what you're going to do, can I identify the signs? Okay, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Good. Seven again. Oh, All right. Hey, take that corner. I promise you, it's excellent. You can step over there. But it's the best corner for this guy. Go. The corner. All right. And then, yeah. The second group, you can go to the, the back. Excellent for three persons. Sit down over there on the floor. All right. All right. And the other group, right here. All right. So, yep. We're here. Uh, no, just spread one, one side first. If you do not have a side, I'm going to give you a number. Okay. You want to lie down, you want to sit free. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Group one, two, three. Now, look. One, two, three, four, five, six. You are seven. Okay? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Oh, now, we have 15 minutes time, okay? I'm going to stop you at 3.30. What are you going to do? Two things. One, you watch the what is active learning video, right? So ask yourself, what is meant by active learning? Each one of you tell your group member, okay? What is active learning based on your understanding? Because you watch it, okay? Second, do you agree with what they say? as far as active learning is concerned, because no one is absolutely right. Do you disagree with what they say? This is the third question. First, what is active learning? Second, do you agree with what they say? Third, do you disagree with what they say? Basically, second and third, similar. And then, fourth thing, why is active learning important? Why is active learning important? Okay? Lastly, each one of you name one, two, and not more than three things. Name one, two, and not more than three things. That means three things. It could be positive for active learning. It could be negative for active learning. Okay? And then you mix your ideas up in your group. Okay? You mix the ideas up in your group. Now, each group, you must elect one secretary who can help keep track of the ideas. And the secretary must have a pen and a piece of paper. Okay, so each group must elect one secretary, and then each group must have a reporter. The reporter is going to walk up here at the end of the discussion, tell us, share with us your group's ideas of active learning. Now you have 15 minutes time to do it, so you need to find a secretary to get a piece of paper, a pen, to draw down ideas, okay, and you need to look for a reporter so that he or she can come up here to share ideas. You have 15 minutes time, now I finish three minutes. I give 15 more minutes. Start of the process now. Who's going to be the secretary? You need a piece of paper, right? So get one, get a pen, get a piece of paper, and talk about this, all right? Okay, excellent. 
We have seven groups of students. This is the discussion time for our student to experience active learning in class. I invite them to form into groups and so that the groups could retain the identity for a while and they could experience teamwork. Okay, let's see what we're doing to work out. So you want us to talk about the pros and cons of... Oh, sure, a little bit. Three. Lastly, is the free frames, okay? Because at the end of the discussion, they can just free frames. This could be possible. Uh, you make it up. It could be from each person, but you seem to be only three things. Okay, one from each person. This could be possible. Yeah. But for those being four persons, we need to sign right? Oh, okay. All right. So we're good. You need, you know, we need to learn how to process as quickly as it is Once you learn something, put it into use, and you will have to retain the ideas.
you're actually getting through this more discussion process, okay? Gathering ideas from individual members of the group and combining ideas to provide some kind of perspective. So you have five minutes left in order to provide some dispute ideas from your group. So you need to know who is going to talk, who is going to be the reporter in your group now. Talk a little bit more about this. Do you agree with the video? 
So the time it's almost up, but I said promise, I give you three more minutes to compensate my speaking time. So in three minutes time, I'm going to invite individual group reporters to come up here to share with us your group's perspectives, okay? between zero and six. And here it's uh, 
free. The remainder is free. So this is more than number one. Which one is group three? One, two, three. Okay, who's going to report? Okay, the reporter. Thank you very much. Introduce yourself and uh, get to come up here. Introduce yourself. Unfortunately, our microphone does not seem to work, so you need to speak up. Your audience is for all the students. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. This is a this is lovely night. Introduce yourself.
there are also drawbacks of this uh, active learning. Uh, for those who, uh, for those uh, who may daydream in the lesson, may not only uh, 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 they they can't learn from the uh, lesson, but also interrupt the progress of the of, of the lesson. Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, we feel that uh, the importance of active, active learning is. Thank you. So that's active learning, what you call better learning? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Could you name one group? Thank you, Tommy. Could you name one group? Number five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Thank you very much. Group number five.
Oh, I would like to give an example of active learning. PE. PE is a form. It's a form of active learning because you don't only listen, but you also apply those physical skills like basketball, football. Yeah. You learn slam dunk. Yeah. yeah. You learn from doing. So. Yeah. Thank you, Carmen. So he something very sensitive. It is the the balance of work and the contributions. If it is not evenly distributed among members in an active learning group, what shall we do? Uh, this is a very interesting issue. Now, lastly, may we welcome group number two, our important group to wrap up the conversations. Number two. You want to come up all together? You're welcome. Come. Yes. Anything you want to share? Yes, come. We be your cheerleaders. Number two. Number two. Number two. Come, come. It's okay. Shane, get used to that. You want to say something, it's good enough. You learn to participate. Thank you. We have a uh, New Yorker here. Okay, come on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give them a big hand. Now, before we go, let me tell you something very important. You remember, you need to complete the questionnaire here, right? Before tonight, before 11.55, this is work number one. The second thing you need to do is to give me the information of your learning partner. If you come to teacher's message number two, okay? I forgot to create the link here, but it's all right. Link is right there. Okay, you come to click into teacher's message number two. Right down there you see a table, all right? This is a table for you to use, very conveniently. You just copy it. And you click on this link. This is Dr. Bat's Q&A hotline for week number two. And you see something like this here. What you need to do is to click on this link. 
Okay? And the discussion topic, the name is My Learning Parkla. Okay? The name of this topic is My Learning Parkla. And when you click into this, you just paste the table here. You copy the table from the message. You paste the table here. And you put down your name, your ID, your name, sort name here, major study, email address, whatever it is. And you also put down a similar set of information for your learning partner. All right? Every one of you needs to do this. Okay? Don't say that my partner is going to do it. I don't need to do it. Every one of you, copy and paste this table into Dr. Beth's Q&A hotline for week number two. And enter the information here, your information and your partner's information. At the end of that, submit it. That means post. Post your message. Click on post. And your message will be there. Now remember, this is your private channel. I'm going to see it. You are going to see it, but not your fellow students are going to see it. But that's the best way to keep me in touch. All right? Before the end of today, if not possible today, before the end of first day. But you must do it before the end of this week because I have to create peer-based discussion forums for the two of you to conduct discussions for your learning contract number one's artifacts, okay? So do it, if you can, before tonight, if not before the end of this week, or the best is on first day. Are you, is it okay? Are you clear? Okay, two things. You need to complete the questionnaire before 11.55 tonight, and then you need to give me this information, all right? Read the two teachers' messages. All right, you need to go, otherwise you might be late. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for the excellent discussions. Your group membership will be retained throughout this week. You are going to meet again on first day on behalf of your group together. All right, that's it for today. CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Life. We are going to meet again on first day, September the 4th. That's it for today, September the 1st, 2014.